And we're here. <laughs> and we're... There's a certain theme that's going on right now, Jolene. Do you notice it at all? Yes. It's you know, feeling very that. red, very blue. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is, it is. And I'm, I'm kind of liking it because this is that time of the year where we literally start to like go through that whole vibe. So this is going to be very, very interesting today because we're literally kicking off the beginning of the matrix. And I forgot to put it on my social media. So like, you know, people don't, you know, don't shoot the messenger and all this other stuff. But um, here we are. So welcome. This is actually the first ever matrix that I'm ever doing um live <laughs> um and it's well, kind of interesting YouTube, huh live on youtube like on this format you it's been yeah, live. so this is private it's been live before but this is the first ever time that i'm actually taking the matrix like live here on youtube so mm -hmm. and this is the first time and this will be the only time that i ever do it on youtube so this should be very much so interesting um yeah so i'm pretty excited about it um i hope that each and every single one of you that are watching are also excited i hope that you guys like the theme the green that speaks towards what we have going on here <laughs> um so we've got a lot to dive into it so hopefully people are able to see the stream because i don't know um but you know if they're here they're here i mean but i think it's kind of like we have a little bit of a lag on our end as it pertains to seeing what's going on, but shout outs to first, uh, Rick Johnson. Hey, Rick. He just Johnson. says simply, yo. <laughs> <laughs> and we say, yo, back. <laughs> Thank you for being first in the chat. So let's get into it. If you, you know, if you're here for the come up series, if this is your first time, uh, buckle up because there's going to be a lot to talk about as we get get you prepared for 2024. And if you've been here before, but this is your first ever Matrix, also buckle up. I hope that you have pen and paper. Um, so this is gonna be very much so interesting to see how everything is going to play out. I see Jolene's got her pen and or her Apple Pencil and iPad. So and I see you over there. Uh, it's a lot to dive into. So, you know, I, the beautiful thing about this is that you get to like repeat it and everything else and replay it just in case if you miss something. Um, but if you've seen where we've been going over the past like four years, this is like kind of like moving towards graduation. So <sighs> three weeks, this is the Mark. type of stuff that I live for. Three weeks. This, these are the final three weeks of the Come Up series live in executive education with myself and my wonderful co-host, co-producer and co-creator. Joel and GC. So uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have questions down below, we'll try to definitely answer your questions and everything else. But without further ado, let's get into it. So what is the matrix? Like, what is the first thing? Like, you know, of course, everybody can look at it in the sense of like from the movie, which it was very much so inspired by. I was deeply inspired by the matrix because of the fact that there was a great deal of learning, but yet at the same token entertainment, but it was like one of those films that you had to go back and rewatch it. And every single time you went back to rewatch it, there was always something new that you possibly had missed. So yeah, that was, that was pretty cool. All right. So, so let's, let's go to this presentation because I, I don't want to, I don't want to like drag it on for too long. Um, let's get into it. Shall we? Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully everybody can see our beautiful presentation uh, that has been popped up. So welcome to the matrix. This is the first ever on YouTube and the only one that will ever be shown on YouTube. All right. So uh, let me go ahead. I think I may have messed up something real quick. So let me go ahead and fix that. Okay. Now we got everything that we necessarily need. All right. So, um, Everything that has a beginning has an end, Jolyn. Mm -hmm. Like that was one of my favorite lines from you know the Matrix, uh, and the reason why I say that is because look at the amount of things that we're starting to see um, that once upon a time started a certain way, but now they're you know we're starting to see that their that their time is coming closer towards its end. Um, their end of the, you know we we see it in technology all the time where we reach the end of life cycle. Um, and now you're starting to see that are happening across other industries as well, where they're starting to see forms of their end of 
end of life cycle as well. Um, but you know, fear not, because at the same token that we see those types of things play out, um, it produces opportunity within the marketplace, you know, for everybody else and something new and refresh will come and stand in its place. And so that quote kind of like stands out for me because it's like nothing ever really dies. It just comes back in a different form and fashion and is, you know, probably just recreated or things have evolved. Um, so today I'm going to talk about a few things. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll get to that in a second in this next slide. So, you know, I dreamed a dream and then woke up. And that dream was that AI created Gen AI. And then Gen AI, Gen AI became synthetic. And then synthetic creates a new world. And then today we're also going to talk about who's investing in those things. So we got a lot to break it down into to get into um, today, uh, Jalen. But, you know, it's not going to be like one of those types of other presentations where we talk about like, okay, hey, well, what is this? What is that? You know, we have Google for that. We have a lot of great things there. This is the part where I get to go deep dive into my brain and try to instill as much as what's up here and, and leave it. Um, on a place like this platform, YouTube, or even LinkedIn. So that way, everybody that's at home or wherever you're at, you can pick it up and also uh, utilize it uh, moving forward. Um, so let's talk about some things, shall we? Um, let's start with AI. I think, that's the, I think that's the best way to start. And I always say it always starts with a thesis. So here's my thesis. Um, moving forward into 2024. So I'm going to take it by year, by the way. So okay. just so that way we're on, we're going to just only talk about 2024, but I'll give you some, some gems in here as it pertains to 2025, 2026. So you'll probably pick them up. So, uh, for those that are not able to look at their screen, uh, the year of 2024 marks a pivotal point for technology companies heavily invested in AI, synthetic media and gen AI. With inflation cooling and consumer spending expected to recover, these companies are positioned for significant growth. Um, the ability to address critical challenges across various industries will drive demand and fuel market expansion, offering lucrative opportunities for investors. Now, if you've been living under a rock, um, and if you don't understand exactly what that looks like, I mean, look no further, pull up the companies like NVIDIA, pull up companies like uh, even Meta this year, pull up companies um pull up even companies such as you know your amds of the world um and your adobe's of the world look at how well they performed and there's so many others like microsoft uh which is 49 percent holder in open ai look at how they performed this year now of course people can say well mark they bottomed out in 2022 yeah they bottomed out in 2022 but what's what was the the driving force that drove them from being the, where they bottomed out in 2024 in the market all the way up to like nvidia now up like 200 and i think it's like 220 percent or something like that AI. what was the cause what was the catalyst for that exactly it was the ai investment so you know i have some notes here i i, I produced a lot of notes so for those that know when i do like um the matrix i produce a lot of notes beforehand and then essentially i provide those things for you all there's not going to be any games. There's not going to be any fluff. No, for real. It's literally just going to be like tons of knowledge dumping for each and every single one of you. All right. So some things to think about, right? Um, so when we when we talk about the simple discussion, you know, there's some things in which that I want. There's some tickers that I want you guys to pay attention to. So we're gonna we're gonna put these we're gonna put these on your mind. Now they're not gonna be on screen. I just only want you to pick up what you pick up. All right. So um, Adobe. So that's ticker ADBE. Uh, CRM, Salesforce, um, Amazon. I want you to cluster those and I want you to put them under the category of personalized marketing and customer service. I'm going to break each and every single one of these down. So for Adobe, uh, Adobe will utilize AI and synthetic media to personalize marketing campaigns and create engaging customer service experiences. Uh, how are they going to do that? They're going to literally do things like brand loyalty and driving conversions. So like, for example, through sales platforms and then also with their creative uh, suites of things. Like look at how Photoshop has significantly changed in just one year alone uh, in providing a lot of generative, generative AI. Beforehand, you never really saw Adobe Photoshop commercials really hit your screen. 
Now you're seeing Adobe Photoshop commercials making it available where anybody can pick it up and ultimately use it. And if you think about it, it's not really hitting on a lot of the editing tools that it once has prided itself on. What is it hitting the tools of? Generative AI of being able to recreate the entire space. You even see some, in some cases, how do you know that this space that I sit in right now is not, say, for example, generated by Adobe uh, AI? Could it be or could it not? It's for you to decide. <laughs> All right. So let's look at other things like, for example, Salesforce CRM. Analyze customer data and predict needs. That's huge. Where we're able to use AI to predict the needs as it pertains to the customer based upon behavior. So offering personalized product recommendations and proactive support, enhancing customer satisfaction and retention. So the more that the customer remains satisfied, the more inclined that you're going to retain that, that customer and they're going to want to keep coming back and back and back. I mean, that, which leads me to the next company because they did so well. Like, think about it. Most folks who normally shop today probably spend, you know, they probably either sp like spend 50% of their time as it pertains to within the retail e-commerce space and also mobile commerce. They probably spend it on this next company, a.k.a. Amazon. Uh, so Amazon, uh, I think that their focus and wh where I see it is further personalized customer experiences through AI powered recommendations, which they've been doing. And of course, uh, grabbing all that data that they've been able to accumulate through uh, voice assistants like Alexa. And then of course, leading to increased sales and customer engagement. So always keeping the customer engaged within the cycle. So if you normally think about like your Amazon experience, it's kind of like you never really leave your Amazon experience. It just really just picks off where you just left off. And they do that very smart because of the fact that they realize if I, if I pick you up where you left off, then nine times out of 10, it's like, you know, you're probably going to spend more. You're probably going to be more engaged and everything else. Um, so there's that part. So I just gave you three tickers and I just explained essentially what their future is alongside what they're currently doing now. That's literally going to spearhead them going into 2024 even further. Okay, let's talk about content creation and entertainment, shall we? Yes. I mean, because what's life without a little bit of entertainment? <laughs> so I'm going to give you three more tickers within this space. I'm going to talk about Microsoft. I'm going to talk about Netflix. And I'm going to talk about Meta. All right, so Microsoft, you know, their Azure AI or Azure AI tools can empower content creators, enabling them to generate and edit video, music, and other forms of creative content uh, revolutionizing the entertainment industry. Now we still have yet to see that, but I have a feeling that we're going to probably see that in 2024, you know, especially with the improvements in which that we're seeing within AI. And now that you're starting to see AI to where you can use text to video, where you can now start to generate video content from AI, where people are actually starting to like recruit, like they're starting to sometimes fool people into thinking that they're watching the next Marvel Avengers, uh, trailer when they're not really watching it. Instead, they're actually watching something that has been generated by AI. It's ultimately going to raise a few eyebrows even further when we get into 2024, when you think about how far in strides that we're making within the technology landscape. Now, let's look at Netflix now, because a lot of folks are like, Mark, we understand you, you talked a little bit about Netflix earlier this year, but let's go a little bit deeper into it, shall we? Let's talk about Netflix using AI to leverage to personalized content recommendations, which we've already talked about, but then also generate synthetic media content. Like imagine if if Netflix got into that business. They already have Netflix Studios, so imagine using those studios to be able to create synthetic media content and then enhancing user engagement and attracting new subscribers in a competitive landscape. Now, people think about it in the competitive landscape as it pertains to pricing, but Netflix is also raising its price. So whereas some folks have actually dropped their price, they're raising their price. So they're raising they're raising the ceiling, they're raising the floor. Now, the interesting thing about that is, is that essentially with synthetic media, which I'll get into a little bit later about like, you know, going a little bit further into the synthetic media, um, what you're going to see is that essentially like you're going to start seeing landscapes, you're going to start seeing content, commercials, trailers using that same synthetic media uh, content to ultimately lure, just like what we're seeing as it pertains to some of these deep fakes um, in, in tech, you're going to see some of those in like actual like content that's actually being used to generate for Hollywood. Um, so then let's talk about another company, Meta. And I think this is one, this one's the most obvious and I think it's the lo lowest hanging fruit. So, and I hope you guys are picking up what I'm actually doing here, but you know, some of these things you'll probably see that they also overlap in the conversation. 
So Meta can create, of course, immersive uh, environments, right? Virtual experiences through their through their Meta Quest. Within you know Metaverse, utilizing AI and synthetic media though to captivate users and generate new revenue streams. I think that's going to be the thing to look at exactly like okay, hey, when we talk about synthetic media for for Meta and their business model, because if you think about it, to use those AI models, they cost like fractions of cents in order to like literally ping the AI services to be able to generate. But from that, it's able to generate tons of revenue as it pertains to ad dollars or say, for example, content that, that builds forth ad revenue or people actually just purchasing content or engaging with the content in a specific space. So imagine like literally playing with your MetaQuest 3 or your MetaQuest 2 and you use AI generatively to say, hey, you know, a, a, hey, Facebook or whatever it is, you know, create this create this landscape for me, create this beautiful canvas of this office studio or this office study where I can literally just relax and it literally just changes the entire environment around you. And now becomes a generative workspace where it's like, okay, hey, if you want to change it, if I want to go change my office space into Tokyo, I can do it by the by the change of my voice and using generative AI. Just, you know, some things to just be on the lookout for. Okay, so we talked about content creation and entertainment. Okay, let's talk about healthcare and medicine, you know, because healthcare is kind of like fallen out of the out of the conversation. The only thing that we really heard about was, you know, really like weight loss drugs and stuff like that um, into the foray this year. But here's something to, to pay attention to. Here are some of the players that I want you to pay attention to. So C3 AI is a ticker in healthcare and medicine. They develop AI powered solutions for personalized medicine, drug discovery and disease diagnosis leading to improved healthcare outcomes, reduced costs, and personalized med medical care. I think that we're going to see more of this, and I think that, honestly, we're going to start seeing more of these personalized medical care uh, packages put together in the forms of subscription models. And I don't think that that's just going to be humans, by the way. You know, just something to, you know, keep on, you know, keep on the mind of, of the horizon. Okay, now let's bring back another player that we talked about a little bit earlier, shall we? I'm bringing Amazon back into the conversation. All right, so Amazon utilizes AI for medical diagnostics and develop AI powered virtual assistants, right? Remember Alexa? What if Alexa stepped into the healthcare foray? <laughs> like Alexa, these are my symptoms. She's gonna give you a prescription. Right. <laughs> or what if, what if you could stare at Alexa and Alexa could take your temperature? Mm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Robo <-doc. laughs> I'm serious. Like, you know, it's not that far out of the, like, it's not that far out of the actual foray of where we think about like, okay, hey, is this really far fetched? Or is this something in which that we will definitely like, you know, be seeing? Is this, is this on the horizon? Or is this happening now? Or is this just me like sitting here whistling Dixie? All right, let's talk about financial services and business automation. There's two companies that I'm going to bring up there. Now, you're going to hear a company that I'm going to talk about. Um, but here's a ticker that you guys have never heard me mention before, HPE. Yep, that's right, Hewlett Packard. I've never talked about them on this platform before until now. So uh, imagine that they provided AI solutions uh, and infrastructure for businesses uh, automating repetitive tasks enhancing decision-making and extracting valuable insights from data, boosting productivity and competitiveness. So imagine like, you know, using the same type of, and imagine if they built that tech into their OEM devices, like their laptops, or say, for example, if they built it into where the device was able to use that technology to recognize and essentially be able to be used on your laptop, your desktop, your monitor, your monitor recognizes that, hey, you're getting tired you know, hey, maybe I should change the t maybe I should change the coloring so it's softer in your eyes automatically just by scanning. Imagine like, okay, hey, I noticed that you've opened this document X amount of times. You keep running back to this document. Okay, why don't I just create a templated version? And when you ask me to generate some form of a prompt, then ultimately it leads me there. I start to like literally put things in front of you that I start to notice that essentially that I I notice that you use a lot, which leads me into. Microsoft, again, 
<laughs> so remember those AI developer tools to build innovative financial services applications such as personalized financial advice, fraud detection, fostering financial inclusion and security. So imagine that. Like we've been seeing a lot of these companies using it for fraud detection. And I think that we've kind of like, okay, hey, we understand that part. But what about like those that we already saw like early on in this year where people are now looking at AI for, for financial advice, which we're still a little early, but you know, hey, it's a good soundboard just to like literally, you know, look at, but then also like thinking about it as it pertains to financial inclusion with the, with the tech becoming so much cheaper and everything else, it makes it more inclusive for everybody else to participate in the markets more. Like think about like, and and am I whistling Dixie or am it, is it really like speaking facts? Because let's let's think about it, right? Let's 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 deep dive into it, shall we, Jolyn? Mm-hmm. So remember when cell phones were ridiculously expensive, or when uh, laptops were ridiculously expensive, where nobody at at any time could really afford them unless you were like, say, for example, upper middle class or just you know high class. Now think about it. We've gotten to this point where the technology has gotten so good and at the same token, the costs have come down so significantly that now it's available for everybody to be able to participate and do the same things at a cheaper price. You can now literally have an effective laptop where once upon a time, $500 laptops were, you could definitely tell it was a $500 laptop. But now it's like, okay, hey, the technology has gotten so good that even at a $500 laptop, it still gets the job done. Okay, so... Let's talk about one more thing. And this one, I'm actually going to have three companies in here. All right. But I think that these will be like the keys. These three companies will really, truly unlock the, like, unlock the, the fundamental structure of the future. And that's sustainability and climate change. One of those companies is NVIDIA. Another one of those is AMD. I'm going to cluster those two. Okay. So they developed AI powered solutions for climate modeling. So like the tech that they create, they can now do climate modeling, resource management, sustainable energy development, mitigating climate change and promoting a sustainable future. We know that they can do that. Like, you know, and I'm gonna probably also even throw an apple into that conversation because they're probably gonna be everybody else to the race as it pertains to literally meeting their, their climate change goals. I think that they've already exceeded, I think they are already there, but I think that they're also going to exceed that goal before everybody even like gets anywhere near close. Now, of course, those two other companies are also nipping at the heels. Okay, so there's another one and somebody says, why aren't the slides showing? There's no slides on this one. This is me just going through my own individual notes. So I can t- I can take it off the screen, but you know, it's, it's just me going through this period. So, I mean, I know that people got questions and you know, I'll just stop to share. Um, yeah. I'll just stop that. So that way we're, we're here. <laughs> Is that better? Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, C3 AI, I'm bringing them up again, utilize AI to optimize energy use, predict weather patterns and mitigate environmental impact of various industries, advancing sustainability across sectors, you know, so like those are going to be the areas, like if you think about like, you know, you know, extreme weather, you know, patterns and everything else, I think that those are going to get even better. I think that the tools in which that we're going to see where we can see things coming at like even faster and essentially allows people or cities to actually legitimately prepare and have mitigation plans. I think that that's all going to be done by AI. Okay. Um, so which I guess it brings me back to my presentation. <laughs> I was going to say, like, I, sh- I should have just, oh, well. Um, okay, so hopefully everybody can see it. So back to my thesis. Okay, so let's talk about the outlook. All right, so, you know, simply put, you know, the potential of AI, synthetic media, and gen AI extends far beyond 2024. These technologies are poised to reshape numerous industries, creating a ripple effect across the global economy. Investing in companies at at the forefront of this technological revolution offers the potential for significant long-term returns. So like, remember when I consistently say, Jolyn, pick winners? Yeah. This is exactly what I mean by when I say pick winners. 
like the folks that are like moving and shaking the industry. Now it's broken up into a few things. So that way you can understand. So that way you guys can, you know, really put it into consideration. And I, and I actually, you know, put them out there for you. So one, and I kind of talked about it, the early mover, like the early movers. So AKA the early mover advantage, like the early adopters, the folks that are always there first. So companies investing early in AI and synthetic media have the potential to gain significant competitive advantage and establish themselves as industry leaders. They're, they're the tide. <laughs> they're the ones that started the entire tsunami wave. Now, if you guys have heard me on this show multiple times, I said a rising tide lifts all boats. And that's what I mean by the, the early mover advantage literally gets the entire party started. Then we have the next thing where we start focusing on use cases. And I said this, I think a week ago, where I said 2024 is all about focusing on companies that have strong use cases. It's going to be all about use cases. So prioritize companies with clear and well-defined use cases for these technologies. So as they are likely to experience greater adoption and success. So on the first wave, you have your first adopters in which said, okay, hey, like, think about it. The first wave was everybody talking about AI, mm -hmm. everybody talking about AI and everything else. Now we're moving beyond the early mover advantage. Now we're talking about the use cases, like the strong use cases, like who has the strongest use case for like, okay, hey, that this is going to be a success. This is going to be a hit. Okay. But a part of that, though, as it pertains to use cases is, and this is the part where most companies tend to sometimes get in their own way. And you're going to find out who gets in their own way or who's actually like, okay, hey, we're well positioned to move forward. A part of that is mitigating the risk. You have to mitigate risk. Just like you're as investors or as traders, you're in the business of, you're in the business of managing risk. So in the same way, when you're a CEO of a company or anybody chief level sweep, or even just a simple founder and everything else, you're mitigating the risk as you move forward. So investors should carefully consider the potential risk associated with AI and synthetic media, such as bias, privacy concerns, and job displacement. Those things are coming. They are coming. Now, is it going to be massive? I don't think so. I don't. I think that we're far out from that, but it's, it's safe to say, it's truly safe to say that now that people like, because think about it before, people were once upon a time so against AI until they started realizing that they started using AI to like literally knock out a lot of the repetitive tasks that they don't want to do. And now that they knocked out a lot of those repetitive tasks that they no longer want to do, companies now are in a position now that they know that people are going to have AI into their office suite and everything else. Companies now have to get a little bit more up to date now some companies are going to have that early uh, that early mover advantage some folks are going to take a little bit longer and be a slow cooker but the biggest thing is companies are going to have to reshape what exactly work looks like and in and in between that process and period you're going to have folks that are going to be significantly displaced because of the fact that they're still trying to learn the tool and the company like it's like okay I'm trying to learn something, but yet I'm trying to go work at an early mover company. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Don't be a learner of, of, the, of the technology and then try to go work at an early mover company. Because if that's the case, it's not going to work. You could be a learner and at the same token, go work at a company or try to find a company that still has yet to essentially add it on because they're, they're focused on mitigating the risk before they actually step in. Those are companies that are primed opportunities for you because of the fact that there's so many openings there and the expectations as it pertains to what they're looking for. They're going to be looking for folks across multiple different spectrums, the folks in which that really, really know it. And also the folks in whom which that are coming in without any forms of doctrination or bias, where they're essentially looking to step into the space. Okay, now let's talk about two more things on the on this one when we think about those these key like things for you as investors or traders or whomever, or just as people to just understand and to, to examine. Responsible development. So choosing companies that demonstrate a responsible approach to developing and deploying these powerful technologies, ensuring so and ethical practices pretty much. Like it's like can they keep it ethical? You know, the companies that don't, well, 
you'll see that they run into a massive amount of problems. You know, the reason why a lot of folks like speak so ill about Facebook is because of the fact that they built great tech and they were breaking things fast, but yet at the same token, they just, it, it didn't look ethical. And that left a sour taste in the market's mouth. And it's hard to, like the one thing about that I know, like, you know, just within my short period of time on this life, I kind of hold this universal truth to be true. Labels stick. They stick. So, you know, those are things to honestly just, you know, be mindful of when we start thinking about companies. And then on top of that, it comes down to a simple thing of long term vision. You know, do you, you know, you know, what is the overall vision as it pertains to the, like from the leadership perspective, from the technology? Uh, also, the approach of the, like when we think about like, is the vision clear where it's understandable? And also it looks very plain where you can see, OK, hey, from this, I can easily see that. Like they're, they're headed towards this direction. You know, are they headed in the right, towards the right future? Okay. Now, of course we got to keep it matrix style. So I'm going to shift gears a little bit. And this is going to be like, if you, if you notice something, I didn't really say this word until now, um, which honestly AI requires a lot of this. Do you know what it is, Jolene? Uh data there you go data yes <laughs> here's a cold here's a cold line that you're going to hear and you hear it from us first you are only useful as the, you are only useful as the data you can create that is the future that we're moving towards you are only as useful as the data you can create So let's let's talk about this thing because you guys have been hearing me talk about synthetic media. So I'll give you guys a definition term because I think that everybody understands AI, everybody understands Gen AI. And remember what I said, you know, Gen AI literally created synthetic media, which, you know, pretty soon it's like, if you think about it, pretty much synthetic media is fake media uh, made by com computers using AI, like deep fakes and AI generated images. That's synthetic media. What do you think is going to be the first industry that gets hit with this or that is already in process of being hit with this? Take Content. a wild guess, Jolene. Content creation. Yeah, well, I mean, that's ultimately how it's created. I don't think that that's disrupted. This is actually disrupting an entire industry. Well, it's well, that includes entertainment, too, though, like mm -hmm. movies, um, shows, all the news um anything that has media will be impacted by the synthetic um let's go even deeper shall we yeah. mm -hmm. in order for us to learn about movies in order for us to where is it that majority of the world learns their information from i mean i think it depends on who you ask but we're just talking about the the vast majority where does the vast majority get their media from from tv and the internet. Actually, I was going to say, it's actually social media. Social yeah. media is going to be the first place, is, is the is the battleground of where synthetic media meets. Like, think about it like this. <laughs> I'll give you a few examples. Now, I mentioned in this, uh, I said, remember, have you seen the uh, Google Pixel commercial recently? Mm -mm. So Google had this commercial where they literally talk, where they literally showed everybody in the same photo and, and it took a bunch of snapshots of everybody in the photo. And then what did it do? The person pressed a single button and it literally adjusted everybody's face to give you the best face of that person. <laughs> Everyone's good side automatically. <laughs> everybody's good side. I mean, if you think about it like this, I mean, think about all those people who take selfies and everything else, right? Mm -hmm. All those folks who take selfies and it's like, think about how many selfies they had to take in, in order to post that one selfie photo. Just had to get the angle just right, you know? It has to be a little bit higher or, you know, let's say like straight on, you know, I didn't like the way I squinted at that one. Mm -hmm. Now AI recognizes that, okay, hey, we're a little bit narcissistic that we always want to have the better photo of us. So it literally will find and it will literally place the right photo on top of people. I mean, you know, think about all these images that we've been using. These are all mid-journey generated photos. None of them are real. Mm -hmm. 
none of them are real. <laughs> like majority of the images that we've used on the come up series for executive education, all of them have been synthetic media. Let that sink in. <laughs> You're about to see, like, think about like, you know, and somebody said like, and it's kind of interesting because people talk about like, you know, entertainment and music, right? Mm -hmm. Y'all seen the SpongeBob SquarePants, like, you know, folks doing the different songs and everything else and how spot on it is <laughs> or how they're putting or how they're putting, you know, deceased artists and literally having them do other uh, artists uh, covers for the same song and just mm -hmm. swapping out their voices and how accurate, how eerily accurate it is. That's just mm -hmm. the beginning of synthetic media. We're just at the beginning. There's more to come. You know, the part where they were able to show Joe Biden, you know, like a video of Joe Biden speaking on something and saying a bunch of things. And that wasn't really Joe Biden. And how eerily accurate it was. You didn't see the pixelation and face changes and everything else. It, it literally looked spot on accurate. You know, that's that's synthetic media. Well, that's all right. So responsible development and ethical practices come to the play. Correct. And like I said, we got to start putting placeholders. And I think the, the first place that's actually going to do that is the European Union. I think that they're going to be the first people that literally right, the first the first system that, regulates, um, that regu that regulates AI, that, that that starts to try to regulate AI. All right. Let's 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 talk some numbers. Right. Because it's, it's going to allow me to, you know, jump ship a little bit. Let's talk about funding of AI. So in 2022, $132.2 billion dollars was invested into AI startups. <laughs> $132.2 billion. <laughs> I mean, kind of crazy, right? Yeah, that's a lot of money. Right. Let's talk about this also. The growth of AI, synthetic media, and Gen AI is heavily reliant on one specific thing semiconductor chips you know yeah you what good is the data if you can't what good is the data if you can't process it right you know again my goal here wasn't to essentially like you know the, like you know of course i'm going to give you guys some some pretty cool things here but you know let's talk about it you know i'm gonna i'm gonna just give you guys some some interesting some interesting points here that's taking place on the startup side you know of the world so we see a shifting investment focus. Um, VCs are shifting their focus from solely funding established uh, technology giants to also backing early stage startups with innovative uh, AI applications. This shift arises from the potential of AI to unlock new markets and revolutionize existing industries. Like I had just said, everything that has a beginning has an end. And though it has an end, though its, pre its predecessor has an end, something new is formulated and comes and stands in its place. Um, you know, when we look at, you know, in investors also, we say that investors are particularly interested in startups applying AI to areas like healthcare, finance, education, and sustainability. Okay. Here's the interesting thing. Did you know, Jolyn, that there is, there are some schools where they literally just designate, I think it's anywhere from two to roughly four hours of school time where the students only learn using AI. There are no teachers. It's just a bunch of students in the room, and they're all using AI. No. Have you seen that? Uh-uh. Where is that doing? Where is that going on? <laughs> Actually, I think there is a school here in Seattle that does it. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it's happening in schools like, in, for example, in Boston. It's happening mm -hmm. in schools. I, I don't know if it's made its way to New York because I haven't really heard anything. I know it's happening in California. Mm -hmm. but And they're starting to see staggering results where essentially the children are actually legit learning. And the reason why is because the child, each child is learning at their own pace. Some will move faster, some will move a little bit slower, and some are in between. But either way, the learning is actually processing without all the necessary barriers mm -hmm. to entry in the way. They are all on the same level playing foot, asking some of the same questions and everything else. So are you saying that basically AI will give everyone the opportunity to have their own individual education plan? I think so. I think that we'll also start seeing that AI will also start writing some of those individual learning plans for students. 
It actually would be good, like, because now. I mean, think about it. Those kids are going to be the kids. Those those kids are going to be the kids of the future that ultimately become not. They probably may not be software engineers. They'll be prompt engineers that make the same amount of what today's software engineers make. How how pervasive do you think (laughs) that the prompt engineering you know market or whatever is going going to be? Like, are we going to get to a point where we don't need any more? prompts or the AI is going to be like, all right, y'all had your fun. I, I can do this myself now. You know? I would say we pro- we're probably still a solid three, four years out, maybe even five. Okay. You know, like things that you're going to see that evolve, like, and I'm just giving you the landscape for, you know, our entrepreneurs out there that are watching, mm-hmm. you know, you're going to see evolving due diligence. You're going to see evolved and, and even outside of, you know, VC space, let's look at HR talent acquisition as it pertains to recruitment that's going to change Mm -hmm. you know significantly and like i said new business models i mean think about this for a second ai ai and synthetic media are enabling the creation of entirely new business models and revenue streams for startups startups are exploring various models such as subscription-based ai services data licensing and pay-per-use ai applications yeah you know, when we think about, and you know, that thing about regu- regulatory and ethical concerns, mm-hmm. what do you think that they're going to use in order to write those regulations? Yeah, they're going to use a- generative AI. They're going to be like, yo, write this policy for me right quick. And then it's like done fast. Now, what's interesting about all this is I think like before one of the biggest challenges for startups was how do they, you know, effectively communicate how they would scale but AI seems to have like an inherent like scalability. Of course, it's already like AI from the jump is already has always known scale. It's only as limited as the data that it's provided. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, when we think about that, like, and and here's some things to consider, like you know, if we're talking about the rise of AI and all this other stuff and navigating landscapes and all this other good jazz, let's let's talk about a few things. You know, given in the sense that it's become so ubiquitous and everything, or it's starting to become ubiquitous and very fast, you know, think about it like this. Increased competition. <laughs> As more startups enter the AI space, competition for funding and market and, and market share will intensify. That makes me think of, so if there's all this increased competition and everything, right, mm-hmm. and almost mm-hmm. like a race to get it done, it just seems like the collective anxiety levels are going to like increase. Perhaps. Perhaps. <laughs> but again, well, that's why I'm trying to give it to like each and every single one of you that are watching. So that way, essentially, mm-hmm. you're mentally prepared for what's coming. So then that way you can start being a part of it. Let's talk about some other things like transparency and trust, you know, mm-hmm. That's going to be huge. Building trust with users and, and other stakeholders is crucial for startups utilizing AI and synthetic media. Now, Another thing is social impact. You level the. We're now using it. Like, think about like, just think about it like this. Imagine if you could use AI to li- literally level the playing field among startups as it pertains to the startups that are, you know, the normally represented groups that are at the table versus the groups that are normally not represented at the table. Mm-hmm. So what's interesting then, you know how like the internet made everything like accessible for everyone. Now AI is another layer on top of that, creating even more accessibility. That is correct. Interesting. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna this is this is just part one, by the way, of like the conversation. So this is a heads up. So we got we I'm gonna get tougher. Like this is just the intro. (laughs) <laughs> this is just the <laughs> intro. Um, we're going to talk about a few other things as it pertains, but you know, let's talk about like let's let's really back in as it pertains to markets because I'm going to give you guys my short term outlook as it pertains to what is it I see. But before I do that, let's talk about a few things since I was talking about like if in order to have AI, you have to have data, and before mm-hmm. you can have data as a process, you must have chips that can also pro- that that are there and equipped that can process it. Mm -hmm. which leads me into the semiconductor market because that's going to be the battleground in 2024. 
Well, well, well. <laughs> it's the it's the engine that's driving all of AI and all things technological in, innovation. So we must talk about it. So let's talk about some of the data, shall we? Mm -hmm. So here's an outlook of what I can potentially perceive of what we can see. We could potentially see a 17% increase in global semiconductor revenue to reach. So that's about $624 billion in 2024 across tech companies. Okay. So $624 billion in 2024. This is a significant jump that follows a 10.9% decline in 2023 due to reduced demand from smart from the smartphone industry. So you can see other industries that are reinvigorated. And then on top of that, we should also look at specific sectors within the semiconductor market that show promising growth. So notice we've been talking about the NVIDIAs and the AMDs and the, you know, mm -hmm. the Lamb Researches and the Microsofts and all those other stuff. So yada, 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 yada. All right. So, but let's talk about some of the companies that we haven't really been talking about, right? Like, for example, has anybody been talking about Western Digital lately? Has anybody been talking about any of the other companies that create memory? RAM? We have. Like, because, yeah, I have. But yeah, this, you know, we have, you and I. But yet, at the same token, we saw that they were significantly devalued over a period of time. Okay, so, and I hope people stick around for this, because if you don't, then you're going to miss it. And then, look, look, I'm going to escalate it to a higher power, because it's above me now. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I hope that you're sticking around. I hope that you're writing. I hope that you're taking notes, because if you're not, look, like I said, it's above me. All right, so let's look at it. 60, I, there, there are some folks out there that are predicting a 66% rebound in the RAM space because of the fact that you're creating so much high performance computing chips, you're going to need the memory in order to support it. So people are going to have to make those investments, realizing that, okay, hey, that this is no longer the standard anymore. So for example, what does that look like for everybody out there in the typical retail market? 16 gigabytes, once upon a time, it was eight gigabytes of RAM. That was the standard. Now it's 16. My guess is 32 is very much so close on the horizon now that it's become so cheap. Okay. And now that we actually so, need it, like... Now that you need it in order to run all these programs that are getting even more resource hungry and everything else, mm -hmm. I would probably look towards like the RAM company, the, the companies like for RAM and storage and stuff like that, the memory type companies. So those are the areas like, cause if you think about it, DRAM revenue. And so that means that essentially that you're going to have a 66.3% increase and, or, or rebound in 2024. And then with RAM itself, the RAM revenue alone increasing by 49.6% on a year over year basis. That's about significant. Okay. Let me give you some more data. Let me give you some more data. So like, let's talk about those AI accelerators, AKA your GPUs, because that's really where they learn that they can use the high performance computing, not from the CPU chips, but from the graphical chips because of the mm -hmm. fact that they, you know, they produce more. So GPUs are expected to continue experiencing strong demand due to their crucial role in AI workloads. And it's going to get even more interesting as the PC market comes back. So that's going to be interesting to watch as it pertains to what those prices are looking like. <laughs> And keep in mind, it's not just two GPU providers anymore. Another has entered the chat. So now you got Intel that has now entered the chat alongside with AMD and NVIDIA. Now, remember, NVIDIA is now pigeonholed because of the fact that they can't produce the chips, the AI chips fast enough. Well, now you got AMD that just released their chip. And so-and-so said, you know, whispers about what's going on over there at Little Boy Blue, that essentially that they got some AI chips over there, fun, uh, like, you know, formulating over there as well. So, which means that this could be a three horse race, which means that that drives more competition and driving more competition is good for the consumer because of the fact that we could probably see prices come yeah. down. So prices will come down. Plus we have positive support from the government as of right now. But demand, but demand stays up though. Okay. Hmm. So Think about it. Supply yeah. side, supply right. side will get better, but yet at the same mm -hmm. token, supply side will get better, but the demand is so high that it's going to take us a little, I think it's going to take us at least another year in order for us to be able to, in order for our technology companies to like those three to meet the demand. So that's money on their side for real. And let's not talk about those profit margins because, well, you know. <laughs> That's maybe for another day, but let's talk about high performance computing, the increasing demand for high performance computing chips for AI data analytics, scientific research will drive growth in this segment as well. <laughs> so HPC. So those are the three areas to look at. 
GPUs, mm -hmm. memory, and and high performance computing. So AKA your enterprise chips. Those are gonna be those are gonna be the number one conversations in twenty twenty four. Okay, so uh, if you're seeking exposure in those, let's talk about some companies. Now, of course, you got companies like AMD, uh, Taiwan Semiconductor, and Intel. Those are the key players, but pay attention to the other players. Those are the tides. So the, the question is, if those are the tides, what are the boats? Mm. That's for everybody's homework. Just putting it out there. Like I said, if you're paying attention, to, if you're paying attention tonight, if you're taking notes, and if you're like, look, I'm in my bag tonight, and I'm going to be in my bag for the next three weeks. Because like I said, I'm going to give you guys a proper send off. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I hope y'all are paying attention. So again, those are going to be the major players as it pertains to AI, engine AI, and of course, some synthetic uh, media. But then at the same token, like I said, those are the tie. What are the, who are the boats? Who are the boats that didn't get as much love? Who wasn't up triple digits this year, but still stands to do very, very well in a market that ultimately still demands it? I'll, I'll move on. I'll move on. Yeah, so who All has right. The, so, <laughs> okay. I got, and, you. I got you. And then there's going to be some other things like, for example, synergies as well. You're going to see some synergy. Mm -hmm. So for example, like semiconductor companies can collaborate with AI and software firms. Like we, we see this, like, for example, you know, the two major companies that ultimately collaborated this year was NVIDIA and Microsoft. <laughs> Duh. You need to process everything that's taking place on ChatGPT. ChatGPT is working with NVIDIA as it pertains to its large language models and everything else and bringing forth that, that energy towards open AI. Come back full circle. Microsoft owns 49% of AI. Microsoft ultimately started integrating that stuff into its Bing services, which nobody was talking about Bing in 2022. Let's like, be honest. Bing, who, Bing what? we forgot that Bing actually existed. The thing? Honestly, not Bing the, the only thing, thing that... The only, the only thing that made us remember that Bing was a thing was the fact that if you use a Windows-based machine and if you accidentally move your cursor over to the far left, then that, that whole search thing comes up and it was so annoying, that was Bing. Outside of that, nobody really cared until all of a sudden, now, here we are. Like I said, so, I'm going to escalate that to a higher power because it's above me now. So, Mark, okay, so we had NVIDIA join the Trillion Dollar Club. So, yep. in 2024, how many... Well, Tesla's close. They're at what eight hundred ninety billion. Yep, they themselves. they literally like inverse each other. Yep. Okay, so I wonder. But I wouldn't leave them out. Like I wouldn't leave them out of the. I wouldn't keep them out of the race for too long. Mm -hmm. You know, of course they're going to still have their rough patches, and mm -hmm. of course they're they're predicated. They're they're kind of pigeonholed based upon what the economics are like, literally forcing everybody to do, like a la okay. Hey, if economics are if if rate hike if rates are still at a high, nobody's gonna want to go out there and buy a car at seven point something percent or eight percent. You're not gonna want to do it. Right. Now three percent, four percent sounds very attractive to buy a car. If you get it at two percent, that's even better. So again, like some people may buy it with the idea there may be sold like okay, hey, I could refinance but possibly next year. You're gonna be waiting until second half of next year, but that's a whole nother conversation. Like I said, it's to a higher power, so it's above me now. All right, so let's talk about um, AI can be can be used to improve the design and manufacturing process of semiconductors. They're already doing that. Mm -hmm. They're using AI to do that. Why is that? Because then essentially, if you're using AI, AI ultimately follows the instructions that read the assignment and everything else. Now, what happens? Those profit margins get better because it was cheaper to ultimately utilize that tech in working side by side with humankind. And then now all of a sudden, it's like it's it costs cheaper. So now if it costs cheaper to make, but yet at the same token, the prices are the same or the prices get better. Hmm, interesting. Increased like I said, margins. Mm -hmm. I think that we could possibly be seeing that some of these DRAM companies also start to participate in the conversation alongside with the AMDs, the Intels, and the NVIDIAs. So here's my short-term outlook for companies involved in AI, synthetic media engine AI. Cause I'm probably sure that, you know, okay, hey, like, and mind you, this is just my outlook. So of course, you know, take everything that I say with a huge grain of salt and also do some due diligence of your own. I mean, I'm just giving you the data points and everything else. What is it that I see? But it's gonna be on you to ultimately take it even a step further, okay? So let's talk about Adobe. Short-term outlook on Adobe, mixed. While its digital media solutions remain high, economic slowdown and inflation could negatively impact customer spending. 
that's going to be huge for Adobe. So the success of it is literally hinged upon maintaining the subscribe the subscriber growth and the drive uh, adoption of its new AI power tools like Adobe Photoshop and all those other things. That's going to be the main driver. You'll find out about that in Q4. And then from that, really track, track it from Q3 and Q4, look at those trends, and then essentially everything else you're comparing it to. I wrap that up in a bowl for you. Salesforce CRM, short look, a short-term outlook, positive. The company continues to benefit from the increasing demand of cloud-based CRM solutions. However, uh, it's dependent on large enterprise customers, uh, makes it vulnerable to economic downturns because when, when large companies stop spending, that literally hurts Salesforce CRM. And sooner or later, that's gonna come forth. So, I mean, hey, listen, y'all know what I'm saying tonight. Let's talk about Meta. They face a short term, uh, they, they face a significant short term uh, challenge due to the increased competition from TikTok and other platforms, regulatory scrutiny and all this other stuff. But Meta's success will depend on its ability to innovate and attract new users to its metaverse platform. So with Quest 3, will it be a success? Is it starting to show success? And can they continue to keep attracting more uh, customers to buy before Apple enters the, fully enters the chat? Apple only just told you that they're on the way, but they haven't showed up to the party yet. <laughs> Um, and on top of that, Apple's like <laughs> Apple's out here trying to create VIP spaces to the house party. Some people may not like that. All right, let's talk about AMD and NVIDIA. Now, they are expected to experience some strong short-term growth due to the continued uh, demand that is ridiculously high for their high-performance GPUs. Uh, but supply chain disruptions and potential economic downturns could pose a risk for that because that's their highest margin items. So, and then on top of that, if they're selling to enterprise-based customers, if enterprise customers start cutting back on spending, if things are starting to get a little bit tight, then that could pose some issues as well. Now, do I really believe that that could potentially happen? No, but do I believe that like, for example, companies like Nvidia are a little bit priced a little bit too high? I don't know because last time I checked, they were trading in like sometime uh, somewhere in the mid twenties as it pertains to forward PE ratio. That's not bad, especially for a company that had reported five, that was supposed to report five billion and came in with eleven. Like I said, it's a <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about HPE, uh, Hewlett Packard. Short term outlook mixed. Company is focused on hybrid cloud solutions, positions it uh, for uh, well future growth. However, com a competition from players like AWS and Azure remains fierce. And honestly. <sighs> Oh, uh, listen, if they can't get it right, look, they could they could be possibly chopping off some of the pieces in order to sell them over to some of the other players that are ultimately looking to, you know, just take whatever's left over. So mm. I would really be watching HPE as a potential target for a potential acquisition. But you never know. Uh, somebody could pull a rabbit out and say, hey, we've been working on this and we finally showed you <laughs> what it do. <laughs> one more thing. All right. Exactly. I wish I wish companies actually did more of those one more things. But, you know. Hey, what can I what can I say? Microsoft uh, enjoy a strong, a strong uh, short term uh, outlook due to their continued growth. Uh, the company's diverse uh, product portfolio and strong financial position provide a buffer against economic uncertainty. So they're pretty much weathered. And if their OEM services for their OEM uh, division comes back for Windows PCs for the PC market starting to pick back up, aka RAM and all those other things where people start buying more machines, that's good for Microsoft. And especially if their gaming ultimately uh, pays off. And word on the curb is they're partnered up with Meta as it pertains to its Oculus 3. So you could possibly be seeing Microsoft Cloud Gaming inside those MetaQuest devices. That is a game changer. Like I said, it's above me now. All right, C3 AI. Let's talk about them. Honestly, I'm uncertain about this company because honestly, it can go either way. Mm -hmm. It can literally go either way. And let me tell you why. The company needs to demonstrate some ROI here, like for real, for real. We need to like you riding on the coattails of the hype of all the other companies. We is like 2024 is going to be like shout outs to the folks from St. Louis, the show me state. Look, <laughs> you're going to have to show us something for real. And so they're going to need to do something to attract larger customers and scale this business competition from larger players and potential economic downturns. Man, that's a challenge, especially when you ain't got that kind of demand. And then when people realize you ain't got the kind of goods like the other companies are packing with. But you ain't got the juice. Amazon. OK, short term uh, outlook remains positive. Companies, strong e-commerce, uh, cloud computing business are expected to continue driving growth. However, inflation pressures, that's the only thing that literally caps it. Uh, and on top of that, it's, it's real. It's a real cap towards its profitability as it pertains to economic downturns. Because, of course, you have to adjust the price in order to keep mm -hmm. people. 
But if things still remain elevated, that I, like I think that they will, Amazon could potentially be a top pick and ultimately shock the world in 2024. Just saying. Netflix faces some short-term challenges due to increased competition of subscriber churn. You know, aka subscribers getting a little bit exhausted and leaving. But the way that Netflix has been Netflixing right now, listen. <laughs> honestly, I think that they got the best seat in the house. When we sit back and look at, you know, the next players who I'm getting ready to talk about, look, I'm giving it a little bit of like, hmm, what you gonna do? Mm. <laughs> and those next two companies are Comcast and Disney. Comcast and Disney are expected to experience a moderate short-term growth due to contributed demand of streaming content. But at the same token, competition from Netflix and other players remains intense. Now, we're not even talking about like Amazon Prime and, and Apple and their content because they're not there yet. Like they, they haven't placed themselves there yet. Like Apple TV Plus, it's like it's more so like a it's like a it's like the whip it's the whipped cream and the cherry on top with a little bit of the sprinkles. But it's not the it's it's not the reason why we're here. Nobody goes to a restaurant and orders like whipped cream with sprinkles on top and nothing else in, in it. You don't do that. Happy that's when weird. You get Unless it, you're a dog and you get a pub cup at Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> but when it's offered, you're like, oh, that's nice. Thanks, I appreciate that. Yeah, you appreciate it. It's like a little something, but it's not gonna it's not gonna make you move and shake. Their content library is small. It's like boutique right now. But like yeah, very boutique. I gotta see who has who, like what primes like uh uh library. Somebody need to call Disney and ask them if they're okay. Like for real. <laughs> Somebody really need to call Disney and ask them if they're okay. Because of the way that things have been moving and also the way that things have been cutting lately. Mm -hmm. You know, word on the curb is, is that essentially that they could potentially be an acquisition target. All it takes is maybe like 32 to 42 billion dollars. And somebody who got cash like that, look, listen. I see some uh, acquisitions, man. And like I said, I, I escalate that to a higher power because it's above me. All right. So overall, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave you all with this. While long term prospects of AI and synthetic media and gen AI are promising, the mm -hmm. short term outlook for individual companies is more nuanced and depends on several factors, if you notice in what I was talking about. So investors, like each and every single one of you, should really tread carefully as it pertains to what you're picking. We saw a lot of great companies were significantly great this year, but yet at the same token, it's like there's a lot of like, now that they had a great year, everybody's gonna be looking at you like, at like it's 1.30 a.m. at the club and sitting back and all the hooligans are like, who's it gonna be? <laughs> Now, Mark, I have a question backing up real quick. Now, do you do you see like Amazon? Um, OK, so I just looked it up. Prime has the largest catalog, right? Like Apple's mm -hmm. probably the smallest, but Prime has the largest. So, and you know, Netflix, they're not going to be acquired. They're just not. But um, they'll remain as competition. But now the smaller ones. I just see Disney as a struggle. <laughs> like I said, like like I said, I, look, hey, look, I'm from the machine world. So, you know, <laughs> look, I'm only just going off of what the data says. Don't okay. don't don't argue with me. Don't don't try to debate and argue with me. Don't at me. Look, go talk to the architect. <laughs> go talk to Bob. <laughs> Dang. Hmm. OK. Like I said, I mean, it's, look, it's, it's, look, it's looking a little dire, but like I said, it's like, you know, hey, if it gets a little bit too dire, you know, I know, I know our guy that, you know I, know, I know a guy, he may not wear like, you know, turtlenecks, new balances and and, uh, and some jeans, but he wears something pretty close and he always keeps doing squat. He'd be doing these little miniature squats when he'd be doing his keynote speeches on the sly. But yet at the same token, look, he could be an acquirer. <laughs> hmm. He can be an acquirer. He's like, look, man, I'll help you out of this situation. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. <laughs> it's going to be interesting to watch. Comcast it. will just forever be Comcast because of the fact that they control all the spectrum and everything else. On, and then on top of that, mm -hmm. they also have like, you know, the media conglomerate. So I don't think that they're going anywhere. But yet at the same token, look. Who is Paramount <laughs> Plus with? Listen, themselves. <laughs> they need to be acquired then. Like I said, it's wide open. Notice how I didn't talk about everybody. Yeah. But again, look, it could be some Game of Thrones activity that's happening. <laughs> Y'all, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we This was like the hardest thing that I've ever had to do, which is like literally bring a lot of like data at each and every single one of you um, in an hour. So like I said, 
you know, go back and, you know, rewatch. And also, look, let Google be your friend as well. I mean, they may not be your friend as it pertains to the Gemini platform, but <laughs> I mean, you know, they can help you as it pertains to helping you find information and everything else. So I have a feeling that after tonight's presentation, some of you guys are even going to use AI tools to also help learn and go even further what we just discussed. And that's dope. But until next time, I'm Mark Monroe. And I'm Jalen GC and the place to be. And this has been Executive Education. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. We definitely read the comments. And if there's a question that needs to be answered, we'll do our best to answer it. We will see y'all next Tuesday. Peace, y'all. And we may actually even have some friends joining us in the next Matrix. So that'll be fun. Know, stay tuned. I know, I like right? A good party. I like a good party. Let's send some. Let's send, let's send some people home next week with a headache. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye.